Hello everyone, welcome to this week's videos. Um, this week we're going to be going over some common applications of the things you've been learning over the last couple of months. This will help maybe reinforce some of the things a few of you have been struggling with a little bit and also provide you with some really useful tools for your Greek projects in the coming weeks. The first thing I'd like to look at today is going over writing your own functions. This is going to be really helpful for your Greek projects. So when you write your own function, when do you want to do it? There's probably three main situations you'd want to write your own function. One, when you find yourself writing the same code over and over again. One, when you find yourself running the same code over and over again. And finally, when you want to make code that you've written available to others. So let's go over a really simple function just to remind ourselves of the basic structure of a function. This function is for creating nice column names. You can see on the left hand side here you have the name of the function and that just sits to the left of the assignment operator here. The next piece we have here is a function called function. So this is the function that you use to generate your own functions and this function takes an argument inside the round brackets. You can pass as many arguments as you like to a function. In our case we're going to pass one function which is going to be a variable x. And then you have your round brackets here and that's kind of where all the meat of the function, all the code that you want to do any of your manipulation takes place. In our case it's fairly simple. We're going to take our argument x and we're going to convert everything in x to lowercase and then that's all wrapped inside the g sub function. The g sub function is going to look for any time that we have a, a space in our argument x and replace that with an underscore. So if we now apply our function, I'm going to create a new variable. Imagine this is your column name, it has a space in it, it has some uppercase characters that we wouldn't want in there necessarily. And all I'm going to do is create that object, in this case it's called evil underscore name. I'm going to then pass that variable into our nice name function, and when I run that function, out pops our nice cleaned up name. Let's go ahead and run all that code in R, so that you can see what happens in your console. So first up, I'm just going to paste the code into the console for our nice name function. If I run that code, you'll see up in the top right in your environment here, a function appears called nice underscore name. Next, I'm going to create our variable. I run that code. You can see now up in the environment you have a new value, evil underscore name, and that contains our not very nicely formatted column name. I'm then going to take that code for the function, pass that variable to it, run my function, and out pops a nicely renamed column name. At this point you might want to pause the video and have a go at doing this yourself in R. So you can use your function in a tidy pipeline just like any of the other built-in functions in R or any of the R packages that you've loaded. There's nothing special about the functions you write or the functions that anyone else writes. So an example of how to use your function in a tidy pipeline would be, first of all, I'm going to create a data frame. This data frame is just going to have two columns one with the column name ABC and one with the column name Norm. The column ABC just has some characters in there and the column Norm just has some numbers in there. And we're just going to use our function just like any others inside a tidy pipeline to operate on the column names of our data frame. So we take our data frame and we can use the pipe function to pipe the rename all function into there. I'm going to pass our nice names function to rename all and then we're just going to slice off the top five rows of that data frame 
to see what happens. And you can see when we pipe that all together, we've now renamed both of our columns in a nicer, tidier format. We've replaced the spaces in ABC with underscores. We've replaced all of our uppercase letters with lowercase letters. So again, we can go back to our studio and just see how that works. Because we're using um, the pipe function and the tibble function, we'll just have to load in our tidyverse packages. Then I'm going to create this data frame. Paste in this code. I'm just setting the the seed here up so that it creates the same output every time just for consistency for this example when we do our random number generation. I'm just creating that table, one column named ABC, one column named Norm. This is just taking the letters of the alphabet and this is just generating 26 values from a normal distribution with a mean of 5 and a standard deviation of 1. I run that, look at that, you can see that's created the data frame. And look over here in the environment, you can see we now have a data frame with 26 observations of two variables. Open that up just to make sure. There we go. Everything's as expected. So the final step is just to apply everything in our tidy pipeline. I'm taking that data frame we just made using the rename all function, passing our nice names function to the rename all function, slicing off those top five rows. I run all that and out pops our nicely cleaned up data frame. So there's a quick overview of functions. In the next part, we'll be looking at how to use factors and mutate them in a little bit more detail.